Good morning, welcome to True Crime and Coffee Time. I'm just having a simple cup of coffee today. I'm having Mateo's syrup. This is the thin chocolate caramel sugar free. Um, I really like this one. It resembles like a Twix almost. A strong roast K cup. We're gonna do two and a half. And then we'll froth up some cream. Let's continue Gary Gilmore, part three, the murders. Gary was transferred to a maximum security prison in 1975 due to extremely violent behavior, but he was still granted parole in 1976. He moved to Utah to live with a distant relative and attempted to hold down a job and maintain a relationship with a young mother and her two children. But his search for stability didn't last long. On July 19th, 1976, Gary robbed a gas station. Come on, Gary. Um, though Jensen, who he was robbing at the gas station, complied, Gary still, Jensen, uh, Lexolution style, uh, in the head. The following night, Gary replayed the murder, killing motel manager Benny in a nearby situation. Uh, both victims were young college students with infant children, so he was like, I'm gonna do this again. Why not? I'm going back anyways. There were no win witnesses to Jensen, the gas station, but Gary did accidentally um, shoot himself in the hand, trying to get rid of the gun, after the murder at the nearby motel. So the gas station, he was good, the motel, and then he shoots himself him in the head. Um, he very poorly bandaged his hand, he left a trail of blood, and the police scanner attracted suspicion of a mechanic in a garage where Gary had left his car prior to the second killing. So they're starting to pick up the pieces of what's Gary up to? He killed this gas station, killed this uh, motel, got a poorly bandaged hand because he shot himself in the hand, dropped off his car, there's blood everywhere, who could possibly be the killer? Probably Gary. <laughs> I'm gonna go enjoy my cup of joe for the day, but I'll see you tomorrow with more true crime and coffee time where Gary is still on the agenda.